Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a fun breakdown of all the tactical gear in PUBG and specifically the most recent one, the blue chip detector, which is also gonna be called the heartbeat sensor. Now, some of the tactical gear has been very overpowered initially when entered into the game, received a lot of backlash and PUBG made some adjustments to them. And sometimes they nerfed it into the ground to where it's almost unusable anymore, like the spotter scope or the tactical bag. So I thought today's video would be kind of fun for us to do an overview, first of all, of all the gear so that you know what each item does, how to use it, and what are some upcoming tactical gears that are coming to PUBG, like the loot workbench where you can upgrade and customize uh, items and your character in the game. And then also talk about how tactical gear fits into PUBG if it should be a permanent thing into PUBG or if it should be changed and rebalanced in some way. So we'll talk about all that and more in today's video. Let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so first off, uh, I have a custom game setup. So it's just me and my bot, uh, my bot second PC over here. So I'm not gonna be playing against any real players or anything, uh, but this will give you an idea of how each tactical gear works. Now, the first one we're gonna talk about is the new one, the blue chip detector which if you don't know, the blue chip, it's called a blue chip detector because every uh, survivor has a blue chip implanted in their head as part of the lore of PUBG. That's how they're tracked by the uh, the overlords of, of the battlegrounds, if you will. Now, this is essentially a heartbeat detector. And for those familiar with like Warzone, you simply activate the heartbeat sensor by holding a right click on your mouse or it's like L2 or left trigger on controller, I think. And you can walk around every five seconds. This will scan a hundred meter area, which is a wide, wide range. A hundred meters is a literally this distance here. This one square is a hundred meters. So anywhere in here, it's going to detect an enemy. What's more is that it does not, uh, it's omnidirectional. So it will scan and find anybody, no matter which way you're looking. Whereas something like Warzone only works for about 50 meters away. So it's much closer distance and you have to be looking. It's like a cone direction of where you're looking. So if you're looking this way, it'll pick up an enemy only if they're in front of you. If the enemy's behind you, it will not pick it up. Uh, on top of that, the audio noise, that little noise, only you hear that as the user. Your teammates don't hear it and the enemies don't hear it. So there's no way to know if you are being detected. All right, now with that out of the way, let's let's go ahead and show a real uh, real use case for the blue chip detector. And honestly, in my opinion, this is the one that needs to get nerfed immediately. You can use it while moving, which is not that bad. You can crouch, you can uh, walk around and use it. You can't run, but you can use it while in a vehicle uh, in the passenger seat. So if you get in and you're heading to a location, let's say you want to head and uh, you want to come to this compound, uh, but instead of just crashing the compound, you want your teammate to drive by it or you to drive by it to see, is it clear? Can we stop there? Watch this. Oh, I just got something on the detector. So now I know someone is here. And now I know which building they're in and that they're upstairs or they're at least a higher elevation to me. So now I can tell my teammates, oh, I'm picking up someone right there. And once I run up here, I can confirm, okay, they're actually on ground level because they no longer have an upwards triangle uh, over their head. So you can imagine having a teammate and me and Molu did this last night on the test server your teammate drives by a compound. They don't even have to be going slow. You just have to time your activation right every five seconds. Once you get within 100 meters of the compound, scan, see if anyone's there. If they're not, you can crash and stay safely. Or if they are there, then you can you know, know which side of the building to park at for safety. You can know which window the enemies might peek from. It's, it's a lot of telling information. Uh, it's a lot of telling information. So that's part of the bad uh, or not. That's not bad, but that that's part of the advantages of the blue chip detector. Now, having said that, a couple of things that I think they could and should do to the blue chip detector to help balance it out is um, number one. It shouldn't activate as soon as you pull it up. Like if I just if I have my MP9 out, which, by the way, 
fantastic gun brand new smg and and you're like moving up like, okay where's this enemy at you pull it up and instantly it pings there should be maybe like a three second delay of when you pull it up to your face before the first ping the first scan goes just to add a little bit of a delay that way you can't literally just go okay got my gun out moving up okay did he, did he move position boom nope okay didn't move like you know so it's very very easy to spam it and you don't even have to have it in your hands the timer resets while it's in your inventory so if you do this you go once have your gun out one two three five seconds have passed boom again so you see you can really swap back and forth swap back and forth that's going to be the first nerf i think that needs to happen along with uh not being able to use it while in a moving vehicle if your vehicle is parked and stopped just like you can do with the first aid you know if you move the vehicle at all you can't do a first aid as long as the vehicle is stopped you can use the um the first aid so i think you should do that too in addition to that um maybe five seconds is too fast you know maybe one scan every five seconds is a bit too quick and um the last thing i'll say about the blue chip detector before we pull up the next um tactical gear is i i'm a firm believer that the tactical gear should always have a balance or a counter and right now there is no counter because if i'm doing this like let me get the other other mouse this so this guy my enemy is going to use the bluetooth detector so right now they can scan me and i'm pinging on their radar but i hear me i hear no audible noise that this person is scanning me right now and knows where i am there maybe should be an audible noise coming from the person doing the scan like a little beep beep beep, beep whatever that indicates to nearby people oh someone is a actually using the scanning tool right now so that you have that audible cue that someone is nearby lurking or hunting you down i think that would be a really good balance next up for the uh tactical gear let's go to uh etc and we're gonna pull up uh what's this one here drone tablet so drone tablet was interesting when it first came out uh it was before Destin was even here and so it was a little drone that you could activate and uh you could park it sky high like so a couple uses uh you could like you know get in it you could fly it up to a certain distance and really scan uh scan your area and you can do a live ping so that your teammates can see and you could say okay i see enemies here uh they're moving up here and you can kind of give a play-by-play -play to your teammates or just generally scan a very wide area to see uh what the next safe move would be for you and your teammates that's one use case another use case was that you can loot with it so you could actually uh take the drone early game and get to um un uh hard to reach places and loot with it boom grab yourself a little vest and you can uh, bring it back to your own your own persons or drop it to a teammate, which is always really cool. And uh, another cool thing is you can have it follow you. So like, let's say if I just park it up here, I have a sky high and I'm, I'm going about my day. I, I'm, I'm clearing compounds, I'm looting and it's uh, somewhere up there. There it is way up there. And I'm ready to start moving with my teammates. I can just simply right click with the drone tablet in my hand drone recall initiated and then it'll just start following me and it'll eventually catch up to me as long as i don't drive away in a vehicle because if you go too fast it'll lose connection and won't follow you but it literally will just follow you as you're running and uh it's really really cheeky a really cool item and it's kind of like a niche thing i've done i've done full matches with like a vss uh canted site and a drone on sandhawk and had a lot of fun utilizing it it's actually to its fullest potential you know scanning where enemies are uh leaving a a ping that i remember okay an enemy's over there is this place clear where can i rotate to next it was just is a fun new way to play the game which is i think the charm of tactical gear and it also is easy to kill by the way if you don't know it it's one hp so you if you ever see one flying in the sky which they're pretty easy to see because they have little lights on them and stuff um actually this one's kind of bugged it doesn't have lights on it weird it's supposed to have green lights if it's a friendly drone and red lights if it's an enemy drone. For some reason, the lights aren't there. That's odd. But anyway, uh, they're easy to spot and it's it's a one tap with any gun. Oh, if I hit him with any gun. 
yeah it's easy to destroy you can pick it up and repair it and um yeah i thought it was a really cool item then destin came out and they really amped it up and made it a very usable tactical gear so now on destin the uh, the really cheeky thing they do with drones is they added drone loot locations where only a drone can get into them and so they put high tier gear or in this case security keys inside of those locations uh, and if you're unfamiliar with what i'm talking about this is an example here one of the pillar crates that you fly the drone into and what you hear in there is the beeping noise because i'm almost out of the usable range for the drone uh, so you fly in and sometimes there's loot there right now there's a security key which is very very useful on destin because you okay get out this thing because you can get um level three gear and level three guns by taking this key and going to one of those trailers i have a full video guide on all of those trailer and building and drone area locations so i'll link that above you or in the description below uh go check it out if you're not familiar with what i'm talking about uh yeah so so now on destin there the drone is super beneficial if you ever see one it's almost a a must pick up item early game so that you can get the key and go potentially get some level three gear um, and i thought that was a a fun addition to really give it a useful viability uh the drone that is and um yeah i think it's pretty balanced overall i think having it to be one shot kill is is good i think making it easy to visually see and there's an audible you know a little uh whizzing sound of the drone so you can hear when one's nearby you i think all those are good things and your player is uh is uh vulnerable you know while you're flying the drone you're just sitting there and so if you're not in a very safe location uh you can get spotted so yeah that's the tactical drone uh get over here hello buddy that's the tactical drone um i think that's a really good item and i think it's in a good place right now i honestly don't think it needs to be uh changed at all emt gear is up next now this one whoops emt gear is is an interesting one because the emt gear in my opinion is the most overpowered i guess would be the word for it I, it's just the strongest tactical gear for those that don't know emt gear is a medical item uh, that when the holder has it you can do a couple of things so i'll show you here let's go uh healing item we're gonna go bandage first aid med kit okay and so if you are damaged or your teammate is damaged you can use bandages to heal yourself up up to a hundred percent health usually you can only heal up to 75 percent health um without an emt gear so can i take some fall damage no i can't of course the one time you want to take fall damage right uh throwables amounts of cocktail let's take a little fire burn here um run through that okay and so uh you could just simply start bandaging it increases the uh speed of the heels so it only takes three seconds right now to do a bandage if you didn't have this uh it would take four seconds to use a bandage and it'll get me up to 100% if I keep doing it. That's number one. Number two, which is the most important part of the EMT gear, it will take a first aid three seconds to be used, and I can go from literally one HP up to 100 HP, which generally speaking, without EMT, you're only able to get up to 75 HP with a first aid. A med kit is the only item that's supposed to get you up to a hundred health. So you have EMT gear, you first aid, it takes three seconds and then you're a hundred percent health from one HP. That's really strong in a team fight or in a solo gameplay. And again, you can use this on your teammates. You're able to heal your teammates in that same small amount of time, uh, up to a hundred percent health. Then la the last two things for EMT gear are the med kit still only takes three seconds but it also gives you full level four boost so three seconds boom you're up and full boost and the last thing with emt gear is if your teammate is knocked on the ground it only takes three seconds to revive them in a knocked position so that usually takes 10 seconds so it's 70 percent 
quicker uh, than without the EMT gear. And then you can immediately use the first aid, which takes three seconds, get your teammate to 100% health before 10 seconds is even over. So that, that total process takes six seconds. Re revive your teammate, give them a first aid, they're back in the fight 100% health in six seconds versus you didn't have EMT gear, it takes 10 seconds to revive them, then you can't give them meds. They have to med themselves, which takes another six seconds. It, it's a it's a really, really strong item in solos and team play. I would say this is the only item that I would strongly consider like an actual nerf to because in its current state, I think it's just really strong even um, for relatively new players. Uh, but having said that, you know, being a tactical gear, you do have to sacrifice a primary weapon slot, which uh, which is a big deal in PUBG because you're potentially throwing away your sniper rifle or you're throwing away your DMR and you're, you're utilizing one weapon, a shotgun, an SMG, an AR. And that's obviously going to leave you vulnerable in a number of scenarios. Okay, so that's uh, EMT gear. Uh, oh, okay. Up next is the uh, spotter scope. So spotter scope, um, unfortunately, uh, was really strong when it first came out. And this is my concern with the blue chip detector. The spotter scope is going to see a similar nerf that the spotter scope saw. Okay. So, uh, what used to be the spotter scope, I'll say that first, what used to be the spotter scope is, uh, it would instantly ping somebody and, uh, you would have this, uh, marker put on top of them and a red live ping would go on top of the enemy that you and your teammates could see and it would track that player as they move behind buildings so it was it was really strong you could literally sit back like 500 meters and just do this you could just scan uh the area like literally just do this you would scan 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 it would automatically pick up an enemy and then it ping the enemy for your teammates now obviously that was a little too strong and so now what you have to do is you see a top screen there hold the fire key to start a scan and that takes what one second it takes one second to scan that white triangle is only for you to see your teammates don't see that so you have to scan them then you have to left click again to live ping them and they'll stay live ping for uh i think what three seconds now so if I go over here, let me kind of get behind the building to show you. So if I right here, if I'm going right here and I, I scan this enemy, teammates don't see it. Now my teammates see it and he runs behind there. It'll stay marked for three seconds. So that way uh, I can see where that enemy went and my teammates can see where that enemy went. Is that uh, overpowered? I don't think so. It is a strong item, but because there is the one second delay to ping it, and then you have to tag it again. I, I don't think it's um it's overpowered, which is a good thing, but it also kind of rendered the item relatively useless because are you really going to sacrifice a weapon slot for, for the ability to have a three second marker on an enemy to do that? Three seconds and it's over or maybe four seconds. Alternatively, you could very simply just have a sniper rifle, right? You could have like your car 98 and you could have your, uh, your, your scope of choice and you could just ping the enemy, uh, with a, a live ping right there. And now obviously that doesn't track the enemy for your team, but your team does see that and it's instant. So you just hit a button. Boom. It's there. New marker. You could say, oh, enemies moving behind the building right there. Boom. Uh, enemy's going to be in this window. Boom. Like th there's other alternatives that are way faster, way more efficient, and you don't sacrifice a primary uh, weapon slot. Okay, uh, so that's spotter scope. Next up is a uh, tactical pack. All right, tactical pack is another one where it, when it came out super powerful, it allows you to put four items or bundles of items in each slot. So you could put a number of bandages in there. You can put scopes. You can put random. I don't even know what this item is, by the way. I think it's a bug. But I just I figured that was kind of interesting. You can put extra guns in there. Uh, you can put extra vests in there, extra backpacks. You can do all of those kind of things uh, with the current iteration of the tactical pack. 
Now that's very cool. That is very, very useful. However, when it originally came out, you could also do all those things. But when you swap weapons, like let's say I want to put away my MP9 because I see this enemy far away and I want to snipe them. When you go to swap weapons, the MP9 goes there, the car 98 goes here, but then you have to uh, reload it manually so the ammo doesn't stay inside of it. They'll just spawn object. They'll just spawn, not a space, untouchable. Okay. Do I don't have a backpack. Oh, God. I don't have my backpack on. <laughs> uh, boom, ammo. So you'd have to swap weapons, reload the sniper, then use the sniper. And then if that enemy, you know, was pushing towards you and you're like, oh, I need my, my SMG back, you'd have to swap back to that, reload the SMG, and then you could be in the fight. So that delay time really nerfed the weapon, not to an unusable state. I think it is a more realistic state now, uh, but that was a really big hit to it because before that you could, you know, you could be SMG spraying. You can see an enemy way out there and go boom, swap. You can scope in and boom, shoot. Now you have to swap, reload, and then go. And that's an extra, whatever, two seconds of delay time. That's a big deal. You know, that's a, that's the difference between the enemy uh, getting into cover or you dying uh, while you're swapping and reloading weapons. Another thing with the tactical pack when it first came out uh, was you could, past tense, you could put tactical gear inside of it. So you could have put an EMT gear inside of it. You no longer can do that. Now it's only there, um, only there for items, weapons, um, armor, all that kind of stuff. I personally think that's a good thing. I think when you could have put the uh, other tactical gear in there, it was a bit overpowered because imagine uh, what I just showed you about how strong the EMT gear is. Imagine having the EMT gear inside of this thing that you could swap to at any moment, heal up yourself with those really quick times and have extra shotguns, snipers, medicals, or extra vests and helmets even stashed away in your, your tack pack. It was just a really, really no brainer item to pick up that um, I think that was a good balance to, to take the tactical gear out of the uh, tactical pack. I think that's a good change. The one thing that I'm, I'm kind of unsure of, and let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, is if you should still have the uh, reload animation delay when you swap weapons. If the weapon should not stay loaded when you swap weapons. Because I think if they change that, this becomes way more viable again, even though you can't have other tactical gear inside of it. But the fact that you have to swap, you know, reload, swap, reload before you can shoot it, I think that is going to hinder, um, you know, a lot of people from picking it up. And, and it does not, uh, no, I don't think it does hinder a lot of people from picking it up. Okay. Uh, so that's tactical, uh, pack. So we did a uh, drone tablet. We did EMT gear, spotter scope, tactical pack, and we did blue chip detector. So that's all of the, um, actual tactical gear. Currently upcoming tactical gear is a, uh, foldable portable workbench. And I, I did this uh, video on a, I did a leak video on this, uh, like a day or two or two days ago. Uh, but essentially it's a, a tactical gear that takes up a primary weapon slot. You, know, you do an animation, you deploy a workbench and you're able to craft new items into the game, such as uh, bigger scopes. Like you could craft um, two four X's and a piece of scrap and make an eight X. Um, you can do certain things like that. We don't know all the details, but it was something like a crafting mechanic in the game. That is an interesting item to put inside of PUBG, which is really not a, um, you know, PUBG is not rust. PUBG is not, um, like this really, really slow paced survival game, even though they might want to call it a survival game. You know, it's a battle royale and it's a hundred people and you fight to the death and there's a set timer on the game, you know, with the zone. So I don't know if looting in the game would really play out that well, although when they had the fantasy Royale limited time game mode, where you actually had to loot and upgrade your items throughout the game, upgrade your abilities throughout the game. I thought that was a bunch of fun. So maybe it does have a place. Uh, in my opinion, the deployable bench would only really work if you could craft 
unique items. So the example I gave was uh, in Vikendi, if y'all remember, Vikendi had a limited night mode and uh, they had a, um, what do you call it? Infrared scope on Vikendi. It was like loot drop only or something like that. But if you could craft special items like that, like a special thermal scope, or maybe like a special magazine that that had like 20 more capacity or like uh, a higher power how higher powered bullets for certain guns like you know just something unique that was like kind of fun and different and changed the way a weapon handled or changed the way your character you know uh moved i think stuff like that could be pretty neat and useful into the game and without being too game breaking you know because um, ultimately with tactical gear, the whole point of it is to provide players a choice of how they want to play the game. Do they want to be the team uh, medic? Do they want to be the team backpack? You know, let me carry extra vests for the team. Let me carry extra grenades for the team, uh, whatever. Do they want to be the spotter scope guy, the, the drone guy? You know, like it creates fun classes that you can play as uh, and it's it's a good variety, you know? It's not for everyone, and that's the point. It's supposed to be uh, a niche kind of gameplay environment or um, experience for certain certain occasions and certain people. So I think overall Tactical Gear is a cool idea uh, in that aspect. Now, having said that, there are a couple items that are in the game that are not Tactical Gear. Some are not even in the actual game for you to use in a normal mode. Uh, one is the Blue Zone Uplink, which can I even spawn it or do they have it deleted? Like they might not even let me spawn it. No, I think they took it out from being spawnable. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay, no, they, they got it. Uh, so these are things that PUBG was kind of toying with that never got put into the game. Uh, this blue zone uplink, it says, I'll read it to you. Set your location to be within the next safe zone. If you are outside of the current safe zone, the next safe zone will be located as close to you as possible. So this is a really strong item. You could activate this, this item. It does the delay and it basically makes the next zone close on you or close as close to you as possible. That is super, super strong item. It's not usable unless you're in a custom game like I am, use blue zone uplink. Uh, and so theoretically, if I was outside the zone, I would be as nearby the next zone closure as possible, okay? So that's one item that they never actually put in. Armor repair kit would allow you to repair your damaged armor. And I think this one does a helmet too, or is there a separate one for helmet? I forget. No, there's a separate one for helmet. So you have helmet and armor. So that means, let's see if I'm this character over here, let's reload. So if I shoot my vest, damage my vest and damage my helmet then if i go helmet repair kit watch my helmet uh hp at the bottom or up the top here boom back to 100 and my armor same thing got level three gear use my armor repair kit and back to 100 like how cool is that how cool is that um that would be really useful i think in the game now uh the couple of things let me go and heal before i accidentally die that would be annoying Med kit. That would be annoying. Uh, let's see. We got the um, AED, uh, mountain bike, emergency pickup. I think that's it, right? Okay. So the other items are uh, self AED. Now, this one is pretty self explanatory, no pun intended. If I were to get knocked, so if this character um, destroys me, I can bleed out or I can activate my self AED. Take a 10 second animation, an audio beep. And boom, I'm back up with a limited amount of health and uh, you know, I'm, I'm back in the fight. So that is a, a really cool item, but I do wish, cause this item saved me a lot. That's why I say it's really cool. But I do wish that they would change the self AED and just turn it into a team revive mechanic for someone who got flushed. Like your team gets flushed and you can use it within a certain amount of time. That's what I really wish. Uh, but maybe that's for another video. Other items that are new, uh, critical, when I say new, other items, other items are the mechanics toolbox. This will fix a damaged vehicle. So where did I put that? I can just spawn one, huh? 
So if I go uh, car, where's my new pillow security car? Which by the way, if you don't know, this car is brand new and it has a usable trunk space like the old um, Porter loot truck did. So you can put stuff in there for your teammates to get while you're driving. Uh, really, really cool. All in the trunk. Okay, but so if you damage the vehicle, uh, you damage the vehicle, then you get in the vehicle and go mechanics toolbox, boom. And watch the bottom left um, bar of the vehicle's health. Bottom left bar of the vehicle's health. Boom, 100%. And now the vehicle's good to go. Uh, put the lights on real quick. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so there you go. So vehicle repair kit uh, is in the game, but not actually usable. It's, again, it's only on custom games. Then there's the emergency pickup, which the emergency pickup is a really cool item because it allows you um, to call in a pickup plane and you and up to three teammates or three people, don't have to be teammates, can attach to it and the plane will fly you to a new location. So it deploys, takes a few seconds to do. It's like the, the Fulton balloon, I think is like the uh, real life name, calls in an airplane that's gonna come and scoop that bad boy up and once it fully deploys, you'll see that you can uh, walk up to it and you can attach. And then now, now you're attached. If you walk too far away, boom, it breaks and you got to come back and reattach. And so uh, this guy will come pick you up and take you to the um, to the next zone. Can't emote in this location. Why not? That's weird. You can usually emote uh, when you're attached to it. Oh, huh, weird. Anyway, the plane will come. Be careful because you can get shot uh, while you're just sitting here. So I always try to throw a smoke grenade on the ground. And then and you're going. And then you can, uh, you know, look at the map, find out where you want to drop and go to the next uh, the next zone. So that uh, emergency pickup is really, really strong. Uh, it's not available in um, Destin, unfortunately, but yeah, uh, really cool item. Okay, what else? Then there is the critical response kit. This is, uh, not Karakin. What's the other map? Uh, Paramo only. This item is only found in Paramo and it says revive your knockdown teammate in one second. So I'm not on the same team as this character, so I can't show you, but if my teammate was here and that teammate is knocked, not flushed, if I have this item in my inventory, I press F to revive them and I revive them in one second. So they get back up and then they can heal, you know, first aid or whatever. Really strong item, but also kind of pointless because it's on one map only and you have to get a security key to go find it at the bunker. And, you know, it's just, again, it's one of those things where PUBG should have done a revive system instead of uh, this item, but hey, it's in there. Um, Mountain bike, which uh, is literally just what it says. You deploy it. And uh, you can ride around it. This is not tactical gear, obviously. Anything that can go into your uh, to your inventory slot is not tactical gear. It's just random items. But really cool. It's a um, single seater. You can do back flips, front flips, all kinds of cool stuff with it. Uh, the only problem with the, uh, the bike is that people can hear you from up to 100 meters away. So it's not a stealthy item by any means, which I kind of think it should be a little, a little bit more stealthy. You shouldn't be able to hear somebody. Yo, TG, thanks for the follow. Um, you shouldn't be able to hear anybody that far away in a bicycle. Just my opinion. Okay, the last item of today's video is the folded shield. This is a brand new item for Destin. Uh, actually, I think it's not Destin only, but it is found on Destin. And uh, to use it, you right click it, three second animation, and boom, now you've got cover uh, that you can play in and it protects you from being shot. Now, a couple of uh, tips with the folded shield. You can get shot while deploying it. So during the three seconds, you can get shot. Uh, it does have health. It has 1500 health, meaning the enemies can shoot it. And you'll see, you see how it took damage? It kind of crumpled a little bit. If they damage it enough, it will fall down and you have no more cover. But it's very cheeky, uh, you know, to be able to kind of sneak around, get some shots in. Uh, while it's damaged, can I be seen? Let me see. Hold on. No. So if it's damaged, oh, you can a little bit on this side. Like if you're crouched, 
you're kind of covered but it has one more damage uh animation let me see hold on okay this is the last damage animation before it's destroyed you can kind of see through it too which is pretty cool can you can i shoot through it no you cannot shoot okay that would have been weird so you cannot shoot through it uh but you're still covered you can still crouch and literally not be uh hit behind it which is good but as soon as you stand up obviously you're super exposed uh prone you're obviously going to expose yourself if you go out to the side so the way to use this is being crouched and then leaning or you know standing leaning stand lean that kind of stuff and you shoot a little more and there it goes um so overall deployable shield is really cool and useful i think it takes up 40 capacity which is a lot um 40 capacity is the same as uh four first aids so one two three four uh that's gonna be 40 capacity for four first aids or one folded shield so you know it is it's a lot to sacrifice in your inventory to have one uh but it, it could be very useful and uh in situations where you want to hold down a certain location or you want to um you know you're out in the open and you need instant cover it's really good for those kind of scenarios now one thing i'm curious about how much damage does it take from a grenade is it insta kill uh you know from a grenade let me back my other character up i don't want him to die so boom throw that Oh, whoa, it like really destroyed it and sent it flying. Okay, so one well-placed grenade will destroy it. Uh, let me do another test, and I'm going to equip a self-AED, just in case this test doesn't go as well as planned. Self-AED, uh, folded shield, and then a uh, granada. So we're going to go boom, uh, folded shield. And then I want to see if this grenade doesn't kill me because I'm on this side of it. So uh, boom. Right there, and I'm behind the shield. Let's see if it kills me. Whoa. Dang, that's strong then. This thing literally will block the blast of a frag grenade. That's really strong. I didn't take any damage from that. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. Critical piece of, uh, of, of kit. And, um, you know, the more I think about it, like, obviously, out in the open, it'd be very useful. Um... But if you're, how many can you get? Oh my God, how many can you get? But if you're inside a building and like trying to hold down a location, I wonder like if you could block a window with it. Cannot install in this location. How close can I be? Pretty dang close, can I vault it? So you can vault. Oh, can I get in? Vault in. And it, your character kind of just crawls over. Okay, so he actually does move around a pretty good bit from it. Uh, where are we at? And if you're like on the other end, uh, let me put my character inside. So can I shoot him? Oh. Yes, uh, the wall doesn't stop bullets. <laughs> Shoot, I was gonna, I wanted to see how many you could stack up, assuming you can stack up multiple next to each other. Uh, but yeah, okay, so. <laughs> uh, so that's gonna be it for the review of tactical gear and those uh, tactical uh, inventory items that you can use. Uh, what do you guys think about tactical gear? What are your overall thoughts? I think tactical gear has a really cool place in PUBG. I think if balanced correctly, each item should feel kind of strong on its own. Uh, they should not be able to be used in conjunction with each other. So one player, I don't think, should be able to use more than one at one time. Uh, but the reason why I think they should feel strong to a certain degree is because you're sacrificing a primary weapon slot. And while you watch you know, streamers like myself or just really good players... They really can utilize certain items um, very effectively. The majority of players tend to not do so. In other words, they, not that they can't. They, they tend to stick with the, the same old, you know, barrel SLR, M4, Mini 14. And they don't really utilize those other niche items um, that a lot of people are afraid that they're going to use them as. So 
I think it's a cool, different way to, to approach the game. It gives new players and veteran players a fresh change of pace. And also keep in mind, with the big influx of new players, not everyone is good at PUBG or good at shooters in general. So having an alternative um, role in the game or on your team can be very, very, very important to a lot of players. Uh, like when we do community nights on Friday, so we do like, you know, community squads and custom games, that kind of stuff. Some of the people that play with us just play to hang out. They just, you know, like the, the camaraderie and the community aspect of it. And they don't think that they're that great at the game. But if you give them the opportunity to be the team medic or the team drone user or, you know, whatever, insert tactical pack here or tactical gear here, it gives them something fun to play for. And I think that's really important for the longevity of PUBG. Now, I will also, um, you know, play devil's advocate to myself and say they have to be very careful and not ruin the core uh, PUBG experience. You, know, you can't make it too arcadey because then uh, you start to lose that that special sauce that PUBG has of being this borderline military realistic slash, you know, arcade battle royale shooter. So it is a fine line they have to walk. I applaud for uh, PUBG for adding new items and really trying to break the mold to see what they can do. I think that's a step in the very, very positive proper direction. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what they do to it. Hopefully they make some nerfs to the blue chip detector, uh, but hopefully they don't spotter scope it and put it into the dirt because then uh, otherwise, you know, what's the point? Uh, and ultimately on the video with this last statement, add a proper revive mechanic into the game, please. We're doing all these other tactical gears that are fun and neat. Uh, we have the critical response kit, the EMT gear, the AED. Let's put a actual usable revive system, not a comeback BR, not a lootable item, not an RNG thing, an actual revive system uh, that would really help new and old players to continue uh, playing the game they love. Because I, I, I do genuinely love PUBG. It's my favorite game. So I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, I hope you enjoy the tactical gear as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the new gear, the upcoming gear that we talked about, like the loot bench and that kind of stuff. And let me know what you'd like to see that maybe isn't being talked about uh, by the devs yet. So uh, thank you again for watching. Leave a, a like on the video if you enjoyed. Share it with a buddy and get subscribed for more PUBG content. If you like PUBG and uh, podcasts, I have a podcast called The Dome Show Podcast. I'll link that up above or down below. Oh, I, I talk with PUBG streamers, uh, content creators, web developers about PUBG, tech, video games, all that kind of stuff in the industry. So it's a bunch of fun. My latest guest was OG Pickle. Uh, we had a blast. So go check it out and I will see y'all in the next video. Take care. Peace.